everybody. Welcome to Y23. I'm your host, Sean Galloway. Um, this is basically a show where we, uh, we're just four men who just like to talk about things that men like to talk about. Um, some things will be uh, uh, local, some things will be national, you know, just whatever we feel like talking about. We meet once a month and we get these topics together, we rehearse them, and we just go in on them. So our first topic tonight is the Baltimore mayor mayoral uh, election and the turnout. Um, I believe it was around 20 percent so I want to start with my uh, panel here and you know what's the reason for that why didn't we try more <laughs> I just ain't want to go why not? <laughs> I'm gonna just be honest all right look um for the most part like with this city we had what like two bad mayors in a row the first one was a thief the second one was a moron so we already knew like if we don't vote really morons, like, what you know she was stupid go ahead I'm just saying <laughs> Like, that's not going to change. Go, go ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So what wound up happening was people looked at the candidates. First off, we had one of them come out with a battle rap track, which I'm not going to lie, it was actually dope, like, if you actually listen to it. But then it was still like, you know, you're like a 70-year-old man rap. And which candidate stuff. was that? Uh, Galloway, or Calloway, something Calloway, like that. Calloway, no, I'm Galloway. Calloway. Yeah, that one. That okay. <laughs> um, and then Catherine Pugh. God, she's fine. She should have won because she was the only one who was actually going to change something. But, like, nobody went, so. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I mean, I don't live in the city, so me voting is not possible. But still, I, I still feel like it goes back to the old thing. Like, you know, we came this far, you're not going to vote because there's no good candidates. Really? Yeah. I, I, I agree with Donald on that. That's, that's, that's I agree with him on that because you know there, there there was a whole thing called the civil rights movement and things like that where people basically died for us black people yeah. in this city and cities across the countries like this one to be able to go out and vote and to say that you know you don't like somebody so you're not going to vote you know I don't think it's really acceptable and then not only that it takes the power out of our hands and puts it into somebody else's in my opinion. Odell? I think we got to do a better job at, you know, bringing the energy back to the city. Being from the city, being from the streets, it's like, it's like the streets never really believe that whatever happens up top is going to trickle down to them anyway. So they don't really, you know, take the initiative to go out and vote because they don't think that whatever happens up top is going to affect them in any kind of way anyway. That's the word I get from the streets, you know. Okay, my, my question, how do we change, how does that change? What do these candidates do to get people out there to vote? I mean, you know, um, obviously black people can do it. We did it for Obama, you know. It, you, there was there was a record-breaking um, elections at, at booth at the election booth for black people for voting during the presidential election, the last one. So how can these candidates gain that steam to get the same kind of turnout? It wasn't just blacks, though. It was. People between the ages of 18 to 35. Uh -huh. Like the thing is, people between the ages of 18 to 35 right now, they can't find jobs mm -hmm. in this city. The land use laws jacked up. So there's not gonna be new businesses built that can generate new jobs. So when they get a job, they are not gonna leave it to go vote. It's not gonna happen. Cause right. right out, they can't afford to miss the time. Donald? I disagree. If it's important, you need to make time. No one I, does. I'm, I'm sorry, like, from the story that my grandmother, my great aunt told me, there's no way I would take anything like that for granted. Like, I just don't understand why people don't go out there and vote. Um, there's something that you have, to, you have to take your own responsibility for. It has to be in you. But if you are that person, you need to encourage your friends to go with you. You need to encourage your family members. So it really does start with that individual who does care and get everybody around them to care. And it's not even a complicated thing to do, you know. So we'll close on that one. Our next topic uh, deals with a presidential hopeful, or she's, we don't know if she's running or not, Sarah Palin, and the fact that it came out that she had an affair, a one-night stand with the NBA player in 1987. Well, I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> somebody like that topic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Odell, I'm gonna start with you. What, what did you think? What was what was your thoughts when you heard this? Well, I, I mean, I like to spend a whole lot of time on people that did things when they were in their early 20s, because you know, who am I to talk about when somebody messed up in 21? I messed up at 23, 25, 27. <laughs> I messed up too much to be talking about, you know, mistakes you made back then. But I mean, what I found more. Uh, puzzling or interesting than her affair with Glenn Rice was, you know, her trying to commentate a basketball game. That was the funny part to me, <laughs> listening to her use words like buckets and listening to her say, <laughs> he, he put it up, he muscled it up, and she called the hoop a field goal one time. And, you know, a field goal. Uh, yeah, she said that a basket was a 
field goal. That could have been what she said in the bedroom yeah. with him, too. She could have had that kind of talk as well. All right, Donald, what do you think? Publicity. Uh, Publicity. You think it hurts her or, or as far as running for president? I think she's a joke from the beginning. So okay. I don't, you know, um, I guess it, the statement is not true. Once you go black, you don't go back. So oh, yep. she obviously married white. So Yeah, I guess so. That don't mean she ain't go back. <laughs> well, that, she was also in Alaska. There's, there's not many black people in Alaska. We so. don't know that. Yeah. We're afraid of the cold. Well, he was <laughs> already up there or really into that. He was down there I'm, for the Alaska shootout for the uh, basketball tournament. Uh, yeah, yo, hit her with the parka on. Right. right. <laughs> so yeah, he met her down there as he was playing with Michigan, you know what I mean? It was also kind of funny for me to hear her, because um, on the streets, his point guard, Gary Grant, you know, they called him the general. And for her to, you know, say that kind of, was kind of funny when she said, well, the general was bringing the ball up the court. And I thought that was funny, because usually only in the streets they called him the general. But she made that wow. reference. I thought that was pretty, you know, unique. But messing mm -hmm. up. You know, having one night stands at 21, um, all of us did that. What's this say about Glenn Rice, in your opinion? Well, I'd bang Sarah Palin, so what it says about Glenn Rice is he's straight. <laughs> like, I mean, like, we're just going to leave it to that. Okay. Um, I don't know too many men around the age of, well, any young man, really, you know, like any young straight man that's going to be like, oh. hmm, I shouldn't do this. Yeah, man. This is a yeah. bad idea. He's yeah. gonna, I'll think about it tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, know, I know 40 year old men don't turn nothing down. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, Let's keep in mind that, I mean, you know, people make decisions, but right a year after she did that, I mean, she did get married. And she's still married to that guy today, so I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's, the, you know, we'll talk to you, there's also reports about her having affairs on him as right. well. well. But yeah. you I'm know, for the as state. the world turns, as the world turns, right. so am I. Right. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break <laughs> after those two topics, and uh, we got some skits lined up for you guys. Uh, we'll be right back. We're uh, supposed to get a lot of snow today. Oh, yeah, man. All night, long day. Yeah, it's supposed to start uh, any time, I heard. It's at 2 o'clock. It's 3. I'm sorry? It's at 2 o'clock. Uh, what are you talking about? The snow. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on my Bluetooth. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't have the diarrhea anymore. That, that, no, I don't have diarrhea anymore. W what's better, gold or silver? Gold is a little better than expensive. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm still on my Bluetooth. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I'm going. <laughs> you think uh, RCA TVs are any good? Oh, yeah. That's, that RCA has been yeah. around for years. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. What was that, buddy? I was, oh, I'm saying RCA has been around for years. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I was on my Bluetooth. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, the diarrhea has stopped. Uh, I'm still throwing up, but I don't have diarrhea anymore. How long are you guys running that sale? Probably just for the end of the week, maybe next week. I'm sorry? They're trying to clear everything out. What are you talking about? I, were you talking to me or on the phone? I was on my Bluetooth. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, I was at a wedding and I thought I had to fart and it wasn't a fart. It was actually uh, number two in my pants, yeah. So it made a big old mess. What, what time is it supposed to start snowing today? Uh, uh, hold on, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on my Bluetooth, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, where was I? Uh... Yeah. It is, it, it is contagious, yes. It is contagious. What candy do you think is better, Snickers or Milky Way? Um, Milky Way is good. I'm sorry? I like Milky Way. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on my Bluetooth, sir. I, I was talking on my Bluetooth. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, you, you like Snickers. Hey, what time does the mall close? I'm sorry? you asking me? Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm on my Bluetooth. I'm sorry, what time did you say, Mom? You think rubber boots are better than leather? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, what? I mean, what you just said. Huh? I mean, rubber boots better than leather. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on my Bluetooth. See, that's what it is. See, <laughs> Yeah. Do you think this Smart Balance tastes as good as butter? No. My daughter hates it. Uh, I'm sorry? My daughter hates it. Your daughter hates what? Smart Balance. So I'm that bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on my Bluetooth. Oh, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry. 
they have the unsalted butter. Do you think that's any good? Yeah, sure it is. I'm sorry? I guess it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm still on my Bluetooth. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if you're trying to be your own thing. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's so good. Welcome back to Y23. To my left here is, uh, is Brace Washington. This is Donald Lewis. Donald is our resident, uh, I gotta take a shot at you, fashionista. To my right here is uh, author Odell Richardson Jr. Uh, check out his book if you haven't yet, The Long Way Home, The Testimony. Um, it's a very uh, true to life book, talks about his struggles in life and what he went through. Um, so we got a very diverse panel up here um, that comes from all different areas. Um, the next topic is the NBA lockout. Um, this is something that's been going on for a while and I saw yesterday on ESPN that uh, David Stern says if things don't start to move somewhat by the end of the weekend he's just going to cancel the whole season. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on the lockout? Who Million, cares? More millionaires pouting over money. Well, Who cares? I, 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 I care. I, I love basketball and it's, um, we've already lost the training camp and they bought the, uh, they just canceled 43 preseason games and, and, and this is a big deal for the youth out there that really look up to these guys and what does that say when you know everybody's floating around with money and, and they can't get this done you know kids aspiring to be NBA basketball players or you know that's their dream in life and they see these guys that made it and yet they're still unhappy apparently because there's no money I mean it's, it's not enough money mm -hmm. you know? well, what I heard I also heard that the owners have a real issue because um, I, I'm, I'm not really that studied on the subject but I, I understand for what I understand there is a, a large amount of the teams that are operating in the red because they're giving out these huge contracts I mean some teams have four players on them making a hundred million plus yeah because they didn't do a proper salary cap and from jump like um Basically, it's always going to come down to economics. Like, the reason that they're operating in the red is because you can't fill the stands and move merchandise because the other part of the economy is not making money they can throw away on basketball games. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, you got sponsors picking up the game, some sponsors are contributing, but without people watching it, then the sponsors wind up losing out. So after a while, if the lockout actually starts to phase in, start to become something solid, one by one, you're going to start seeing sponsors drop. You're going to start losing, like, Budweiser. You're going to start losing, like, Coors. You might even actually lose Reebok and all the ones that do, like, the unofficial NBA jerseys, you know, the cheap ones. Mm -hmm. You might even lose those because it's just going to stop moving. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it does have a trickle-down effect, but basketball in itself, like, rich people getting more money, I could care less about because it doesn't feed a single one of us in this room. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really affect us because you can just change the channel and watch something else. If you really need to watch basketball, Watch it on YouTube from a game from last year when it was good, so you know how it's going to go, so you won't be disappointed. Yeah, that to me, bas <laughs> basketball is interesting as far as the way they deal with the financial part because NFL, their contracts, like, you know, uh, let's say Joe Flacco signs a $60 million contract. He's not guaranteed that whole $60 million. In the NBA, whatever that number says on the contract, that's what they get. It's guaranteed money. Well, in the NBA, they cry more. That's like, true. I they mean, do like, cry more. I, as, a, as, a, as a college football player, former college football, I will say NBA players <laughs> cut it out. I mean, seriously, <laughs> cut it out. So stop the crying. You're not getting knocked out. You're not getting concussions. Football is hard. That's a hard sport. <laughs> and it's also like, I mean, like you said, it's going to be more idle time if you don't have the kids checking out the games, you know, going to the games. You just got more idle time to get into more situations well, that ain't as you possible. raising them. Like, how well, I mean, yeah, it, starts at, it starts at home. But still, I mean, everything, even the rec centers getting closed down and things like that, when you do that, you're still uh, giving up more of the time that they thought they had something to do. And now it's like limbo. And then you never know what they might get into. It just, it, it, it kind of makes the situation more unstable. Yeah, I'm like sorry, that's bull crap. Because I'm sorry, if I have my child, my child's at home and basketball's not on, you ain't going outside. You open a book. Play Nintendo 64, PlayStation, Wii, their lockout has nothing to do with our children. That's no. our problem. No, exactly. yeah, right, right. I agree but with you. Still, I'm telling you, they'll find other things to do. Then beat they... them. 
All right. Why we're going people stop yeah. beating kids? All right, we got we got four different right. endings on this one, so we're going to move <laughs> on to the next topic. Now, this this topic is uh, should hustling retire? And when I talk about hustling, I'm talk not talking about just the drug game. We're talking about all kinds of stuff. We're talking about you know five dollars, ten dollars DVDs, bride maids, the day they come out on on camera. You know, it's not the real thing in the theater. You know, stuff like that. Right. Um, with so many ways to make it in America today. There's a window of opportunity to do whatever you want legally. Should hustling be put to bed? Well, you gotta, you gotta, it depends on the mindset. It's a mindset behind all of those hustles. And everybody's not just laughing and joking when they're doing these hustles. That's what they feel they have to do depending on their circumstances. If you've never been in that situation, you can't understand it. Mm -hmm. I've been there. It's just like people don't just go around and say, "Oh, I want to sell drugs and laugh about it." Mm -hmm. There's something more that comes deeper than I mean, that comes from a deeper place. Now, now, now when you when you were selling drugs, what was your mindset? I mean, how what, what got was, you so hooked? It was into a depression, it? and my family's here. I mean, things happen. People die unexpectedly. You lack the guidance. You don't have people around that can direct you in the right, you know, path. You start hanging with other people that share in that same misery. And then you start being, that becomes your family, you start doing what they do. And it don't feel as bad when you got other people around you that are saying, oh, we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a lot deeper than you think. When, uh, but if you never did that, you know, it's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. And what finally brought you out of it? God. It's just God. It's just finally getting to a point where I realized that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And, and then I said, oh, it's time to make a change. It's time to make a change. You see all your friends dying. Some of my friends are here. We've seen it. You know, read the book. It's in there. You know, it's people that was in my book when it came out that's dead now. And that book just came out not too long ago. It's still going on. There's a mentality behind it. And if you never lit, walked in them shoes, you, you, you can't understand it. Mm -hmm. All right. What are your thoughts, guys? Depends on the hustle. Mm -hmm. Like, uh... If it's something you can pass down to your children where they can build off it and create something important, then by all means, go for it. Don't retire. Go out of control. Do everything you can to make it work. But if it's something dumb, like bootleg Timberlands, mm -hmm. like that gold-plated jewelry mm -hmm. that people are selling where it rubs off on your shirt, not your ear, your shirt, <laughs> like... You got gold fake. dandruff. Hold on, no, the worst is the, the fake, fake hair. Like, it's like a cheaper quality of hair. It's basically like watered down. Who's selling that? Who's it's selling like that? watered down broom pieces and shit. Like, I mean, like, it's really bad. And the thing is, it's like you're doing more damage than needs to be done. Like, selling crack is one thing, because crack is by crack. These chicks don't know they're getting fake, fake hair. So it's like, you know, at, at least play the game for what it is. Right. But if you're going to do it, leave something behind that someone can make better. Okay. If not, Cut it. Donald, you want to close out on this one? Um, I kind of feel a little bit of you do. Like hustling, the point of hustling was to get to a better point in life. So you won't have to hustle no more. So if you're hustling, like make a game plan out of it. Do it, get out, make the money, yeah, start your business. You, but if you has got that type of mindset, you wouldn't hustle in the first place. I, I disagree because that's like people who out there like designers. Like Ralph Lauren started selling ties out of his trunk. Yeah, but we talking that about that was ties. a hustle. Yeah. If you're hustling to make a career to do what you gotta do, go for it. But if you're just being dumb, like why sell somebody else's shoes or t-shirt? We can sell your own t-shirts right. and shoes and make your own money for well, it. Why sell Absolutely. drugs in your own community? It really only destroys people you know. Well, we're gonna take another break and we're gonna come back with our musical guest, Carter James. Welcome back to the show. We're here with Grammy, uh, Grammy nominated uh, musical guest, Carter James. Uh, he was nice enough to come out and uh, talk to us about his career, where he's going, all the things that he's done. Uh, for one to understand, I'm going to start way back. He used to play drums for Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass, 1975. Uh, met Teddy Pendergrass right in Baltimore, snuck into the backstage of the Baltimore Arena. And, uh, and I was accepted because the doorman said, let him in, he's been here before. So from then on, my confidence started and I uh, just had fun with this journey, you know, nice journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about that journey. Well, um, you're from Baltimore, born and raised. Right. Um, you still come back, uh, you still contribute to the community. Uh, what are some of the things that you've done throughout that journey? Uh, talk about some of the things that you, you've worked on um, from the past to the present. Well, first of all, I worked on myself. 
worked on my relationship with God, worked on my relationship with being a father and even reconciling some crazy relationships that the destruction of that nightlife had brought upon me, which I'm 24 years clean now. That means no drugs, no alcohol for 24 years. Praise due to God, and uh, and after that, it seemed like my whole energy came back to do whatever you know was in me to do musically. You know, so I'm a drummer, as I said, and then I just went to a Tracy Chapman concert once, uh, and I was enjoying it. About 10 years ago, I was enjoying the concert, but this guy came out. And he had acoustic guitar, and he played the whole show by himself, and I said, hmm. Interesting. I'm going to do that. I'm a Scorpio. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. <laughs> Scorpio say he's going to do something. Run. <laughs> so, so I said I was going to do that. So I picked the guitar up. You know, I still uh, play drums, but I picked that guitar up and I just went on a pursuit to enjoy guitar and just tell stories behind the guitar. Not to go out to be Jimi Hendrix, and I love Jimi Hendrix. Not to be Jaheim, Raheem, or whoever, you know, not even to be Teddy, not even to be a great singer. We get good later. I just picked it up, just said, hey, we're going to do something with this. And I started to do it. And I mentioned Jaheim because Jaheim picked up a song that I had recorded 30 years ago. I recorded this track 30 years ago, and I got a call that someone wanted to sample it. Well, what they did was something called an interpolation, which they re-recorded the music over and then he did his words on it and used my music. And what song was that? Uh, the song called uh, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all never heard Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell? No. no. Oh, not, called, not, not by Jaheim, anyway. Oh, it's called uh, <laughs> This Old Man, He Play One. You never heard that not song? Not by Jaheim, oh, no. No. <laughs> The song's called, Hey, How You Doing? Baby, What You Getting Into? So it was called Ain't Leaving Without You. Okay, and that was nominated for a that Grammy. nominated for a Grammy. And you know, nominations are, they say, you're good, you're good, you're good, and you're good. But you take the award home. And that way, Usher took it home. And that's cool. <laughs> okay. That's cool. That's right. all right. So right. I just want everybody to understand that you come over my house, you won't see 10 Grammy little... Uh, phones, uh, records in, at my house, right. you know, but uh, it's just a pleasure to be honored and to realize and accept the fact that I'm a good writer. Absolutely, I, and I, I can agree with, I can uh, kind of go in with that as well. I was a journalist at one point, TV news reporter, nominated for Emmy my first year out of the military, and you know, I didn't win, but it was a great honor, so I know exactly what you're talking well, about there. The honor is bigger than winning. Uh, yeah, in my, in my eyes, especially to the people that don't win. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a break right now and set up. We're going to come back and you're going to you're going to perform for us. Okay. Fine. All right. Thanks. This is a song called "Shoes on the Wire." The song was I was inspired to write this song from seeing the shoes just hanging on the wire, which signifies uh, death and somebody taking over territory. Uh, when I saw some baby shoes on the wire, I was fooled. It hit me, so I started to write this song called He Won't Be Home Tonight, Shoes on the Wire. Goes a little something like this. Joey was only 17, lived inside of a crazy scheme to be king of the Astro jungle. Claimed to be a remover boy, he thought to stop him would be impossible. For his only mission was to get paid in full. Rain was about to fall down on his life. Cloud over his head, like in the trees of the sunlight. But he would not listen to what nobody said. Things his way. Now he's a love statistic for the fool's way to die. His soul is flying in the sky. He won't be home tonight. He won't be home tonight. He won't be home tonight. Heaven is his 
I hear your voice in the night And in the morning, hey yo Was the road you traveled worth the lies you gave Cause the price you paid lies six feet down in the cold grave And when the sun that's away My father, uh, there ain't no message nobody can say But when we looked around, couldn't find old Joey. Huh. Another name is written on the side of a ghetto wall. to Y23. We're here at the Terra Cafe taping the show. Um, our next segment is called <laughs> Give Me Back My $10. And basically what this means, this is something that we came up with just having fun. Everybody buys something bad. They thought it was going to be so good and you want your money back once you find out it's a terrible thing. So what we like to do is we like to go and we talk about the what's the thing we bought latest that we wish we could get our money back for. And we try to employ the people to give us our money back. It never really works, but it's nice to try. <laughs> so, breaks. Durex condoms. You might as well just go, it's gonna break. Okay, like, basically they're made out of an inferior latex. You put one on, false sense of security. Like, okay, this isn't gonna go bad. Nine months later, bam, you're ruined. So, yeah. <laughs> Durex, give me back my $10. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> so uh, for me I went over you know went to Mr. Chang's first initials PF and the worst customer service in my freaking life 
But you work in retail, so you know something about I work in retail. So, long story short, the waiter, my bill was $98. Gave the waiter seventy dollars in cash. I said, "Put the rest of my card." My card comes back charged forty-eight dollars. What did you do? Oh, I thought the cash was my tip. No, give me back my money. <laughs> <laughs> so I pretty much called, complained. You know, got a gift card and my money refunded. But still, never go there and never trust the waiters. It's with your PF chain, though. Like, like I said, if I were to die today. I have an unofficial will that says to cremate me and throw my ashes in the kitchen so they shut that bitch down. <laughs> I've been saying that for years, and I'm not, I'm not backing off of it. Put me in the pepper shakers, ruin the place. The PF chains. The one downtown. The one specifically downtown. That's the one it I has to go. Okay, okay. I just want my money. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to say my, my, um, my giving my $10 back goes out to this certain sub shop in, in uh, just below Randallstown that will remain nameless. Go in the sub shop, and, you know, it's one of those places that if you don't know, you, some of you may know what I'm talking about. You got to order and don't look around. Order your food, get out of there, get the hell out of there I've because you're going to see something I've that you there. shouldn't be seeing. Uh, one, this guy's chopping over the grill, he's sweating over sweating. the meat. No he, gloves, no I gloves. had that same experience. <laughs> exactly. No gloves, you know exactly no what I'm talking about. You know, yep. you know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that, uh, you have to admit, we've all ate from there and the subs are good. Dirty shops have good subs. Dirty <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. If you're all from Baltimore, you know you go to a sub shop. When it's, when it's the one that you're like, yeah. yeah. The dirtier the kitchen, the better the food. Yeah, like, I mean, like, that's, that's a terrible that. way to be. That's a terrible way to be, restaurants. The dirtier the, the, dirtier the kitchen, the, the, the better the food. Hell no. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I, just don't, I just don't agree. I'm a very picky person. I don't eat mayonnaise. I don't eat anything white, people. I, 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 I don't eat white foods. I don't. I, don't eat, I eat French vanilla ice cream because it's yellow. I don't eat vanilla ice cream. I don't like it. I don't eat anything white. And I'm very picky about my food. So when I go in, I want to see everything. I want to see hair nets. I want to see gloves. gloves. I don't want to see them scraping up the meat with the receipt that That's you just... That's what I said. Yeah. That's what happened. Right. I don't want to see that. That's exactly what happened. I was look. I, I had already ordered. We had already ordered, and um, it was like, you know, the meat fell out when he picked it up to put it on the sub onto the counter, and he used the receipt out of his shirt and picked the meat up and put it back on the sub. But I had already ordered, so I was like, ah, uh, we are, we have work. Anybody from Randall Town probably know what shop we're talking about already. Yeah. So you know, that's what I want my ten dollars back for. Me Actually, too. It, it, twenty dollars. I was a teenager. I, yeah, I was a teenager out there. I went to Mill for Mill, so I spent a lot of money in it. So <laughs> give me my hundred thousand dollars back. <laughs> <laughs>